Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan. I'm here to uh, talk about uh, this year's 2022 Mid-Season Invitational MSI Tournament. It's an exciting tournament where um, the best teams from each regions around the world come together between the spring and summer splits uh, to compete against each other to kind of test out the water, to so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically, um, you know, uh, teams from the major regions, like in China and Korea, and then sometimes in Europe, um, typically when these uh, matchups and then in the tournament. So, you know, you'll see the odds that are heavily in favor of those regions. Um, but yeah, let's talk about today's slates. I, I believe DraftKings has two slates um, kind of split up, uh, you know, three games late and three games late. Um, I don't know why they did that, but maybe for the scheduling purposes, uh, because G2 plays twice today, um, as, as I, I believe so. Yeah, so I think that's probably the reason to do that, um, which I understand for scheduling purposes, it's not the best. And for DFS purposes, it's not the best. Um, but let's just go through it and then I'll kind of go through uh, each team's strengths and weaknesses as well. Um, and, and, um, and yeah, let's, let's do that. All right. So first matchup is between T1 and Saigon Buffalo. So T1, you know, uh, if you've been following LCK, they've been undefeated um, and they won the spring split um, in Korea and they're going up against Saigon Buffalo. So let me see um, their strengths here. So Saigon Buffalo is actually, I'm, I'm actually a little hopeful uh, for um, their play, play style because they come from Vietnam, I believe. Yeah, VCS, um, and they play... Uh, really fast and really chaotic, um, kind of like CB LOL in Brazil. Um, and Vietnam is kind of notoriously known for that as well. Um, they typically try to win early game just by, you know, pure mechanics and stuff. Um, but going up against T1, I, I actually like Saigon Buffalo as like kind of like a dark horse um, in this tournament but not against T1. T1 is, I just feel like they, their strengths also are the early game and kind of um, superior mechanics and everything. And, you know, and they're undefeated. And then I feel like T1 is one of the best teams truly in this tournament. And I mean, that's a tough matchup for Saga Buffalo. So I'm pretty sure T1 is going to win. And I love T1 in this spot because like I said, Saga Buffalo will try to, um, be you know beat you through aggression which naturally translates into uh, higher kills so even though they're the heavy favorite at minus 2800 I like T1's kill upside today so I love T1 in this spot so that's mark circle that right there and then uh, for deep GPP I mean yeah I mean I think first game in the tournament I mean T1 hasn't played a competitive match in a while and I know Korea, they were going through a lot of like changes and updates because of the potential Asian game tournament that was going to happen, you know, like a little small regional Olympic-esque tournament where um, like Korean esports players would play against Chinese esports e players, you know, in an Olympic-esque tournament. But that got canceled. But leading up to that, um, T1 players had to train for that and all that. So I understand T1 had to go through a lot during this off season or well not off season between right after the spring split was over, um, trying to handle and juggle uh, the potential Asian game obligations, but also mid season invitational. So maybe T1 is kind of like, you know, all over. Um, I don't know, but I, I just think at the end of the day, T1 has, you know, superior mechanics and objective uh, uh, play style, macro game play style. So I think T1's going to end up winning. I just feel like it's kind of hard to shy away from that. And then um, the next matchup is DFM from Japan. That's Nation Focus Meet from Japan. And then Team Aze 
I don't really know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know that much about Team Aze. I know it's from LLA. Um, they have Korean top laner Lonely and then AD Carry and Five Kid. We've heard of those guys before from other regions, but now they play on this team called Team Aze from LLA. Um, they were promoted to the LLA less than one year ago, and they're pretty good. So, um, but LLA teams have struggled in the tournament like this, tournaments like this. Um, but LLA is not actually not too bad. I mean, their junglers started out as a carry style jungler, but I like that. Um, I like um, in tournaments like this that you try to take a chance against, uh, you know, uh, you know, much better teams, in my opinion. Um, so I actually don't mind taking a shot with Team Aze, um, but DFM, um, you know, they got rid of their mid laner in Aria, who plays for, you know, used to play for Nongshim. But now they have, <clears throat> you know, another... <clears throat> Another Korean uh, laner in Bay who used to play for Uh So uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that's going to be an interesting um, one. I actually, no, I think it's Yaharong um, that plays for, the, for them now um, in the mid lane. But yeah, I think DFM is pretty good. So um, I actually don't think this is, I think this is a toss up, but I do think the FM should be favored slightly, not this to the, to this extent. Um, so I would definitely take a shot if I were straight up, straight up better and team Aze because of the way they, they play the jung, uh, aggressive jungler Aze. So I would definitely target him if you, if you are stacking Aze, the jungler. Um, but DFM, I think, is a little too much for them, I think, in the first game of a tournament like this. But Dimitri is the name of the D uh, uh, Team Aze's jungler, so I would definitely have him in my lineup if you are staking Aze. But T DFM traditionally has played slow, so I think this could, could turn out to be a slower matchup compared to T1, so... But I predict my ultimate prediction for this matchup is DFM wins, but in a lower kill upside matchup. But I would definitely, I can definitely see Aze pulling an upset if um, in a game like this. All right, G2 order. Yeah, I mean, G2 has been so volatile too. I don't know if order can, but I don't know if. Yeah, I think Order is probably one of the weakest teams, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to go G2 here. I am actually more confident <clears throat> in G2 winning here over uh, T1 beating Saigon Buffalo, I think, because I think Order's play style does not fare well in this tournament like this against the superior competitions like in G2. Um, I think order is from the same region where I sneeze there, but yeah, I, I like G2 here to be order, um, order, um, from what I know, um, they were struggling in that turn in that region where, um, I think Pentanet GG came from. Um, I, I know they have that top laner from Pentanet GG now plays for playing for order and uh, bio Panther. But aside from him and then the support, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't think I like them. I don't think I like them to do well this tournament. They don't really have a specific strength. I think their bottom lane is pretty good. Their top laner is pretty good, but not good enough to be G2. I mean, compared to G2's like, uh, players, I think G2's much better. So, yeah. So that's probably the first slate. And then the second slate of this of the day is between EG. Starts with EG versus G2. You know, <laughs> classic NA versus EU. Um, classic LCS versus LEC. Um, people are going to be up watching this game. Um, evil geniuses, as you guys know. 
uh, won the LCS uh, this tournament. And I know Jojo Pion in the mid lane has played well. And then Danny in the uh, AD carry position uh, and Vulcan in the support position. I know they um, are pretty good um, for LCS level, but their laning phase is not that great. So I think it all comes down to the mid lane and the jungler, I think, though, at the end of the day. I know Inspired, when they when Evil Geniuses wins, it's always because Inspire gets ahead. Um, but if he once he gets behind, I think their lanes struggle just like him. Uh, you know, so I, I just feel like against a team with a better jungler, I I have a feeling EG is gonna struggle. They're not the type of team where they are good at coming from behind if they have a deficit. It's going to be hard for them to come back. They're not known for that. So Evil Genius is going up against G2 and Yankos. Um, I like Yankos um, to kind of dominate the possession. I mean, not possession, dominate um, the pace of the game, uh, especially in the early game. Um, I just think Caps and Yankos will be a little too much. Um, so I'm going to have to go with G2. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I'm a, you know, I live in the U S I should pull for the LCS, but I just feel like inspired, uh, for EG will struggle against Yankos in G2. Um, and that tends to be the reasons, uh, reason for EG's downfall, um, every time, so I just feel like Yanko's having played well this season. Um, I like G2's chances much more than EG's chances. And I, I do think this is going to be a pretty kill high upside, just knowing how they both play. Um, I think EG high on confidence today after winning the LCS and all, always between the NA and the EU matchup like this. They always tend to be more bloody than the data indicates. Um, so I do think this will be a good matchup to target um, either side of it. I think for GPP purposes, I can definitely see e playing EG as well. <clears throat> but I think G2 is going to win. And then the next matchup is RNG versus Istanbul Wildcats. Um, RNG, as you guys know, is from China. Um, and then Istanbul Wildcats. Um, you know, they're, they're coming from the uh, TCL, I believe. Yeah, TCL. Um, Istanbul Wildcats had, uh, had, had a very hot streak coming into this tournament. Um, they went undefeated, um, beating everybody just by, you know, blowing them out, really. Um, I like their roster as well. Um, I think their biggest weakness is, I mean, the, they always struggle in tournaments like this, international tournaments. Um, I think the Turkish teams tend to kind of have a poor objective um, play, in my opinion, over the years. But maybe that's fixed with this experienced roster and the fact that they've just been undefeated the past months, uh, two months or so. Um, uh, I didn't really like, um, their AD carry at Farfetch. Yeah. So I think, but he, he looked pretty good in most, uh, the recent, uh, you know, uh, regional, regional playoffs. So I really like him. Um, and then I think that's going to be the reason why they can upset RNG, but, yeah, I mean, it's RNG, though, we're talking about, right? Um, <clears throat> but I'm actually inclined to take a shot at with um, Istanbul Wildcats. Um, not not in, like, an optimal setting. Obviously, I think RNG will probably win, like, 8 of 10 matchups if they play against each other in 10 matches. Um, but I actually give them, give Istanbul Wildcats more of a upset shot compared to Saigon Buffalo. So I can definitely see... Um, that could happen. So if you are playing deep GPP, yeah, I would definitely consider playing Istanbul Wildcats. Um, also in RNG. So I think these two matchups, I mean, yeah, Evil Geniuses G2 and then RNG Istanbul Wildcats. I think those are the two uh, games to target in my opinion, because 
the next matchup is PSG versus uh, Red Canids. I know Red Canids is coming from CB Lowell and then PSG Talon, you know. You guys have heard of PSG Talon, and I, I've had a history of picking them, and they do pretty well. And they are like a veteran team. I know that now Doggo in the AD carry position is gone, um, but I don't like – I really don't like the mid laner there. Bay, I believe. Yeah, he used to play for Nongshim. Um, I'm not a huge fan. Um Yeah, and they're, I mean, their AD carry is good. I mean, Doggo is gone. But I think Unified is pretty good. Yeah, this is a pretty good team, I think. Um, just looking at PSG's uh, roster, I just don't like their mid laner. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think they have a pretty good team. <clears throat> And Red Canids, yeah, I mean, they like I said, they come from CB Lowell, um, but they are known to uh, come back from behind. So I think this is going to be a tough one, though, for Red Canids, though. I think their AD carry um, is pretty good. Um but going up against Unified and PSG Talon, I think that's going to be a struggle. So I do think PSG Talon will win here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this this late slate uh, for today's slate, uh, it's going to be an interesting one because really, like, I think any any team can win um, in any of those three matchups, even as number Wildcats. But in terms of the kill upside, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see all three matches blow up. Um, but if I have to guess, yeah, I mean, I think Evil Geniuses and G2 is probably the one to target. And then RNG is the Wildcats, and then PSG Talon and Red Cannons. I just think PSG Talon tends to play a little bit slower. So I think that's going to be the reason for that uh, low kill upside there. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, just, to, just to recap, I like T1. I like... DFM, but maybe Aze, um, just in a G GPP setting, and then G2, and then I like G2 as well in the next matchup over EG. EG can definitely pull it off, though. Um, and then RNG, and then I'll take a deep shot with Istanbul Wildcats, um, just given the early tournament rest, rust in RNG, and then the play style of Istanbul Wildcats, and then I like uh, PSG Talon to win, but in a lower kill upside matchup. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll try to make another video for tomorrow. So, yeah, have a good one. Bye. Good luck.